putting the cigarette ashes on the rug. Good for the moths. Go home and feed your own moths. <laughs> yeah, I will. What's the big idea? Well, I can't stay around here all day. Danny, I've got to get you to okay those proofs. Okay, for goodness sakes. Nervous Pete. Be with you in a minute. What is it with you and this housemaid bit? I told you Louise has the week off. Well, couldn't you hire somebody else for the week? I don't want to hire anybody else for the week. Okay, I'll send out an item saying, uh, Danny Williams had to cancel his engagement at the Copa because of an acute case of housemaid's knee. <laughs> Pickle. <laughs> a strange place for Louise to put a slightly used pickle. Hi, Dad. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Aunt Liz. Hi, Russ. Big boy. Mm. I'm hungry, Daddy. You go into the kitchen and make yourself a nice bread and butter sandwich and have a glass of milk. Go ahead. Okay. And look out for my nice clean floor. Walk on the newspaper. <laughs> Russ, it's in the wastebasket. <laughs> Drop that pickle. But it's practically brand new. <laughs> Put it back. Drop it. Why can't you eat things that are good for you? Why do you always have to eat pickles? Because they help kill the taste of the things that are good for me. <laughs> you will eat nourishing food, you understand? Bread, butter, and milk. That's nourishing. How do you expect to grow up to be a nice, big, all-American football player? I'd rather eat pickles than be a jockey. <laughs> Please go into the kitchen and eat bread and butter. <laughs> it's about the time I think I'm becoming a model father and I'm about to step up on my pedestal. He knocks me off with a pickle. I wouldn't feel too badly. You're still batting 500. That's pretty good in any league. What do you mean, batting 500? Well, Terry doesn't go around hiding pickles in vases, does she? <laughs> No, but when she was Russ's age, she did. She's a young lady now. What a young lady. Popular, smart. You should have seen her last report card. I sure was proud of it. She keeps us up. She's going to graduate an honor student. That proves there's nothing to heredity. <laughs> what about these proofs? Give a lady a chance to get her apron off, will you? Oh, sorry. Awfully sorry. Hi, Daddy. Hello, darling. Hi, Liz. I'd... We had a fashion show at school today with professional models. You did? Uh-huh, the famous Fischel girl. The Fischel models were at your school? Yes, and oh, Daddy, they're such, they're such gorgeous women. Now, there's a daughter for you, huh? How come you didn't invite your poor old father to this nice school? <laughs> the last time I asked you to a school affair, you said you were too busy. That was for a cockamamie leather craft exhibit. <laughs> this was a cockamamie girl craft exhibit. There's a difference. Oh, God, the shell girls are so glamorous and self-possessed. Well, when I saw them up there on the stage looking like queens, right then I, I knew what I wanted to be. Daddy, I want to become a model. Oh, and you'd be a beautiful one, too. Do you really think so? You bet. And in your senior year in high school, if you still feel you want to become a model, we'll, we'll discuss it with your great advisor. Then she can tell us which college courses you're supposed to take. Daddy. Daddy, I want to become a model now. Now? Yes, now. I've decided that's what I want to do. It's glamorous, and you make lots of money, and wear beautiful clothes, and it's fun. And if that's what I want to do, now's the time for me to start. I'm not getting any younger, you know, and I've got to start thinking about my future. I <laughs> think you better start thinking about your homework. Homework, homework. I spend my life fooling around with, with history and chemistry and Latin while the parade passes me by. <coughs> Terry, what are you trying to say to me, dear? Daddy, I want to quit school. What? <laughs> Harry, you're messing up your father's batting average. <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't suppose for one moment that I would allow her to give up her education to go to work. What do you think I am, an idiot? Do you want my honest opinion? No. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go out to the kitchen and have some milk and pickles. I don't care what I grow up to be. <laughs> Terry, the idea of quitting school and going to work is absolutely ridiculous, and we'll not discuss it any further. Oh, but, Daddy, you quit school in your second year of high, and it hasn't hurt you. That's different. I had to work. I didn't have the opportunities you've got. I wish somebody would offered me a, an education on a silver platter. What's the date of the War of the Roses? What? 
Habla usted espanol, señor? What? If x plus 10 equals 2 times y squared, how much is xy? What are you talking about? Exactly. What am I talking about? Who needs it? Why should I waste the best years of my life in a dull school when I could be accomplishing the things on which my future depends? What's the matter with her? No, she wants to quit school. Her whole future depends on it. Oh, boy, does she want to get married? Now I can have the whole bathroom to myself. Oh. <laughs> jokes, jokes. I'm at a crisis in my life, and all my family can do is tell jokes instead of offering me help. I'll offer help. Come on, I'll help you pack. <laughs> you I don't need. Get out of here. Pick up the paper in the kitchen. Look, Terry. Don't rush this business of growing up. You got plenty of time for that. Believe me, the world will still be waiting to knock your brains out after you've finished your education. Enjoy your youth. Make the most of it. That's exactly what I want to do. Make the most of it. Not spend all my life in adult school. For the time being, you will spend your life where I tell you to. Oh, here comes the heavy father bit. <laughs> yeah, the heavy father bit. Now go to your room. And stay there for the rest of the day. And no dinner. That's right. Treat me like a child. Punish me. Why did you humiliate me? Why did you beat me? That's the first sensible thing you've said all day. <laughs> and if you don't get upstairs this instant, I'll take up that suggestion. to learn. She's so bullheaded, I got a good nose and let her try it and fall flat on her face. Oh, now, Danny, you wouldn't dare take that chance. She'd probably get a job the first crack out of the box. You know, those fellows who run those model agencies are looking for fresh young faces. Mm, you don't have to tell me about the fellows who run model agencies. I happen to know Harry Fischel pretty well. He's a member of the Friars Club. I see him there all the time. He's a nice guy. And he's got one of the best agencies. What were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Dan? Yeah. yeah. Terry? Terry, come down here this instant. Danny, what were you going to say? He's got one of the best agencies in town. Terry? Uh, Terry, dear? I, uh, I've made my decision. You want to become a model? I'll not stand in your way. Danny, do you really mean it? I really mean it. After all, you have a right to live your own life. You're not a child anymore. Full-grown young lady. But if you're going to go at this thing, let's go at it right. I, you should start with the best, uh, like the Harry Fischel agency. I mean, I don't know him, but he's supposed to have one of the best agencies in town. And since you were so impressed with his models, well, that seems a logical place to start now, doesn't it? Oh, Daddy, I just can't believe it. Oh, Liz, isn't it wonderful? Great. Your father's gone completely off his rocker. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> oh, I still can't believe it. What's not to believe? You want to spend the rest of your life slinking in front of a camera? Then go ahead. Be a slinker. <laughs> I've got to go look through my closet and find something to wear. Oh, Daddy! <clears throat> Speaking of slinkers, <laughs> would you mind telling me the rest of this plot? I love whodunits. There's an old Lebanese brother. Oh, goody, an oriental story. <laughs> As I was saying, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. What do you want with more flies? <laughs> it's just a saying. It means that sometimes you can do things a lot easier by being gentle than being harsh. That sure makes sense. Yeah. Why don't you try it sometime? <laughs> In a minute, I'll try something on the seat of your pants. Gee, what happened to that honey and vinegar routine? You go to bed, I'll bring you up a glass of vinegar. Go ahead. Oh, goody, put a pickle in it. Well, ladies, will, will, you, will you help me out? Oh, we'll be glad to help you, Mr. Williams. But what's wrong with your daughter wanting to be a model? Well, no, nothing, really. Well, it's just that Mr. Williams feels that his daughter's too young to go to work. That's right. He's right. She's got to finish high school. She should have her education. Don't worry, Mr. Williams. We'll put on a little act for her. <laughs> Ham it up a bit. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget you for this. 
That's not the only reason I'll never forget you. <laughs> I'm Terry Williams, and I'd like to see Mr. Fischel. So would a lot of other people. Sit down. You'll have to wait your turn. <laughs> Is Mr. Fischel going to be able to see me? I've been waiting for two hours. I don't know. I've given him your name. <sighs> You've been waiting two hours. I've been here every day for the past two weeks, and I still haven't gotten in. What time is it by your watch, Elaine? I don't know. I'll have to call up my pawnbroker and find out. <laughs> Never mind. My stomach tells me it's lunchtime. Say, how about some lunch? It was your turn to bring it today, Elaine. Mm -hmm. I've got it right here. Wonderful. Oh, potato chips again? <laughs> I only had a dime. What's wrong with potato chips? They're nourishing. Yeah. Oh. Would you like some lunch, dearie? No, thank you. I already had a sandwich. A real sandwich? <laughs> With bread? Oh. Two slices? Gee, you must be loaded. Where have you been working? Oh, different places. You have? Oh, gee, you're lucky. I haven't worked in six months. You know, this business is getting tougher all the time. Yeah, rents, gas bills, laundry bills, oh. a little food once in a while. You end up without a dime. And they expect us to keep up appearances. Isn't that awful? Ooh, you don't look as though you have much trouble keeping up appearances. <laughs> well, you can't judge a package by the way it's wrapped, honey. <laughs> Do you go around like that? Well, who can afford clothes? <laughs> we had to sell them. We just wear what we work in. Sorry, girls, Mr. Pichelle isn't seeing anyone today. Oh, oh no. There goes oh. another day down the drain. Well, girls, let's hit the pavement again. If I have to do much more pavement pounding, I may faint. I'm Good. so hungry and tired. Well, that's the modeling game for you. Good, Good luck, luck, kid. Good luck. Thanks, same to you. Isn't there any chance of seeing Mr. Fischel today? I'm afraid not, dearie. He's awfully busy. Lawson, check the Anderson Hosiery account, will you? Find out how many legs they want for next Tuesday's layout. Yes, I will, <laughs> Mr. Fischel. Uh, Mr. Fischel. Yes, what is it? I want to become a model. Naturally, everybody does. Oh, Mr. Fischel, if you just... All right, as long as you're here. Let's see what you look like. Let's see your legs. What? Your legs, you... Got legs, haven't you? Let's see them. <laughs> Higher. Higher! Mr. Fischel, couldn't I pose for a toothpaste ad and show my teeth? <laughs> You'll pose for what we tell you to pose for. Now, how about a little information for you? Take this down, Clausen. Name? Terry Williams. Height? Five, two, and three quarters. Weight? Uh, 110 pounds. You're gonna have to take off a lot of weight. <laughs> well, my father says I'm just right. Your father's not running this office. <laughs> well, Myra's just fainted from hunger. What should we do with her? <laughs> well, don't let her lie here. Throw some water on her. All right. Now, wait a minute. I've got a better idea. Take her over to the studio and tell him to take a picture of her for that new mattress account. Then throw the water on her. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, well, I feel like I'm gonna faint. Now, where was it? Yes, you've got to lose weight. Join a gym, work out two hours every day, learn how to walk, balance books on your head for at least an hour a day, go to a drama school, learn how to use your hands, how to dance, how to ride horseback, everything. Go to bed early, work out like a prize fighter at a championship match. Then, maybe in a year or so, I could get you a little job once in a while. <laughs> Gee. We'll keep your name on file. Don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> What's your telephone number? Uh, uh, we haven't got a phone. <laughs> Daddy's little girl to heaven to hold. The 
precious gem That's what you are Your daddy's bright And shining star You're the treasure that I cherish Oh, so sparkling and so bright You were touched by a holy And beautiful night Like angels that sing You're a heaven And your daddy's little girl. You got that, Benny? I want it arranged just like that. Yeah, tell Wally. And we'll put it in the show tomorrow night. What do you mean, why that song? Do I have to have a reason? It's a nice song. And besides, my conscience is bothering me. <laughs> well, how's the hardworking model? Oh, tired. Did Linda call? Linda? Oh, she's my friend from school. I'm supposed to finish my term paper with her. Oh? Why are you worried about your term paper? I thought you were going to work. I'm not going to work. I'm going to finish school. Well, what made you change your mind? I learned my lesson today, Daddy. I decided that you were right and I was wrong. Well, dear, that's a decision I have to let you make all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, that modeling business is so awful. Those poor girls. Nothing to eat and nothing to wear. One of them even fainted in the office. Those poor girls. One of these days, I'm going to have to do a benefit performance for them. <laughs> oh, that must be Linda. I'll get her. All right, dear. Hello? Who? Mr. Fischel from Mr. Williams? <laughs> For me? <laughs> Why would he be calling me? I don't want to be a model. <laughs> well, ask him. Uh, hello? Why, yes, uh, Mr. Fischel. Well, you owe me no explanation. I mean, after all, uh, I don't know you and you don't know me. And we don't know each other. <laughs> Besides, I haven't time to discuss it. I'm having a discussion with my daughter, who's standing right next to me. <laughs> no. Well, like I said, Harry, I don't know you and you don't know me. <laughs> Bye. What did uh, Harry want? Harry? Oh, you mean Mr. F well, he just uh, called to explain why you didn't get the job. It was nice of him. I don't get it. What's the get? What's so unusual about an employer calling a girl's father to explain why she didn't get a job? Well, how could an employer call a girl's father if he didn't know who the girl's father was? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Daddy. You're the sneakiest father in the whole world. Now, Jerry, don't jump to conclusion. Remember now, the laws of this great country are based upon the principle that a man is innocent until proven guilty. It's the American way. And I have always prided myself on the fact that I've raised my children to respect the traditions of our country. So be a good citizen and drop the whole subject. <laughs> Go call Linda or something. Go on. Oh, it's the American way. Well, is it the American way for a father to frame his own flesh and blood? <laughs> oh, come on. Now, what do you mean, frame? I did it for your own good. I couldn't let you make a mistake you'd regret for the rest of your life. I won't stand in your way, he said. All right, maybe I bent the truth a tiny bit. Maybe my concern for you was stronger than my scruples. I mean, you get that way about people you love. 
You have the right to live your own life, he said. <laughs> All right, stop hitting me with my own arrows, huh? <laughs> I know I said that, but I didn't say you got a right to ruin your life. Look, honey, try to understand my... Look, dear, I, I, I thought it was the right thing to do. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe? All right, I was wrong. <laughs> Seemed the right thing to do at the time. Look, kid, you gotta remember that the, I'm still kind of new at this business of raising kids all by myself. Look, I've always been an emotional man. I've acted first and, and thought about it later. But when the responsibility of raising you children fell in my lap, I, I tried to make myself over. I, I, I bought books on child rearing. I, I studied, I educated myself in child psychology. And, and, and I, well, I, maybe I funked the course, but I'm doing the best I can. Is doing the best you can include lying to me? I said I was wrong about that. Well, that's easy to say now that the damage has been done. All right. Maybe the damage hasn't been done. I framed you, I can unframe you. Hello, Mr. Fischel, please. Oh, I know he's in. He just called me. This is Danny Williams. Thank you. Hello, Harry. Danny Williams. Yeah. Listen, that, that little scheme we cooked up for my daughter, look, I was all wrong. I, I want you to give her a job, as a favor to me, please. Well, it, she found out we framed her, and she figured I was unfair. And let's face it, I was. Of course, I only did it because I love her and don't want her to throw away her youth. I mean, after all, Harry, you know, these are very important years to a girl Terry's age. And, I mean, her character's being formed, her habits, her preparations for, for being a good wife and a good mother. I mean, these are the years that are going to determine whether she'll be miserable or happy for the rest of her life. Well, I couldn't let her make a mistake like that without trying to stop her. No, no, please, give her the job. Look, I tried and I failed, so give her the job. She doesn't believe that I know what's best for her. Since she wants me to butt out of her life, well, then I'm just going to have to butt out. Daddy, I changed my mind. I don't want the job. No, listen. Oh, Mr. Fischel, I don't want the job. I want to do exactly as my father thinks I should do. What? At the tone, the time will be Sorry? five. <laughs> Governor of the state of New York wants to talk to me? Yes, Daddy. Hurry up. He's an important man. Don't keep him waiting. Yeah. Well, I wonder what he could want. Election time is over. Oh, Daddy! He'll be right there, Your Excellency. Daddy, hurry. He's waiting. He is? Well, I hate to keep him waiting. Ask him what it's all about, huh? He wants to know what it's about, Your Excellency. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll tell him. He wants you to be Toastmaster at a big state banquet. Isn't that wonderful? Uh-huh. <laughs> hate to turn him down, but I'm so busy lately, I've got to play cards at the Friars Club next week. I Daddy! Wonder. He's a very important man, the governor of the state. The least you can do is talk to him. That is true. That's true. Besides, I do have to set my watch. <laughs> You're real cute. Hi, Gov. What time is it? <laughs> Uh, yes, Your Excellency. <laughs> of course, Your Excellency. Why don't you tell me it's the governor? <laughs> yes, yes, sir, I'll certainly be there.